something cool in the mail. We got a little um, Rico GR1S from my boy Bellamy Hunt. We got look at that beautiful Japanese um, label. The beautiful Japanese label. All right, how about you record me? Yeah. How about you? You want to stand over there and then I can take your spot. And then we could we could do this. All right, so um, you guys might have heard that I recently bought a Rico GR. One, I bought on cage.com, but apparently it's supposed to be quite shoddy, and Bellamy Hunt, aka Jap Japan Camera Hunter, warned me, and after two days of using it, it screwed up on me, so I returned it. My boy Bellamy just sent me uh, a Ricoh GR1S straight from Tokyo, Japan, yeah! So it means it's uh, quite cool. For you guys who might not know, um, the Ricoh GR1S, it's a film camera, it's a compact film point and shoot. 28 millimeter lens, small, compact, discreet, a fantastic film camera for street photography, and everyone in Tokyo who I know has it is absolutely in love with it. Uh, their digital recoils are quite nice too. So let's just uh, do a little unboxing and see what's uh, what the whole hubbub is about, huh? So let's see. Ah, uh, uh, ripping these apart. Uh, Yes, freedom, freedom. Oh, check out this guy. Check out this guy. Send me a little. Um, <laughs> what even send me this film? Huh. Oh, it looks like here's all the, the instruction manuals, the little case, and he sent me a roll of Kodak Gold ISO 100 film. What the hell am I gonna do with ISO 100 film, Bell? I mean, you just send this into because uh, you had some leftover film, huh, you cheap bastard? Alright, and you know, lovely little packaging, nice little snug box. Um, I'll put in a uh, plug for you, Bellamy. So, if you guys need any cameras, film, digital, whatever, check it out Bellamy Hunt at japancamerahunt.com. He'll help you find the camera of your dreams, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, here we got the little Rico here. Rico, Rico, I'm not sure how people pronounce it. Ooh, and it's got a little nice leather pouch what KEH.com did not provide. So open it up. Oh, nice nice one, Bellamy. He even put in, man, this guy loves his plastic. Bellamy, you're killing the environment, dog. You gotta, you gotta calm down on the, the packaging. So, da 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 The Rico GR1S. Oh yeah, you get a nice close up of that mic. Oh yeah, so here's the front. Here's the top of the camera. Side profile. Side profile, back profile, and the bottom. So, the first things first, what we should do is pop in a battery and toss in some film. So, fortunately, um, I've got a spare uh, CR2 batteries. So, these things accept CR2 batteries, which are, um, you know, tiny little batteries which are actually quite easy to find most uh, drugstores sell them if you're in the states you can pick one up from CVS or whatever like that you can buy them on Amazon I know they, they usually have them everywhere so it's not uh, really a big deal and you know they're they're small and stubby and um, quite quite long lasting I suppose um, let's see where's this bloody battery I don't even have it Here's two AAAs. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do I not have the battery? Oh well. Actually, I have a <laughs> a spare one from like this trucking. Yeah, let's just try that. All right. So here it is, the CR two battery. Tiny little bugger. So to toss in the film. First thing you do, let's open this up, and let's see which way. Positive here, so just to toss in the battery, and screw it in, and okay. it is alive! Whoa. Nice, so it's uber small, uber compact. The great thing about these point and shoots is that they're absolutely tiny. The lens, you can see, you turn it on, it extends, and then you retract. It's really nice because uh, I like to shoot street photography for the Leica. 
but sometimes you just want a small little point and shoot camera that you can just carry with you everywhere you go. And of course the best camera is the one you have with you. So it's nice because you could literally just fit into your pocket and I reckon it's nearly as thick as my wallet. So it's one of those things that it's just really nice that sometimes you don't want to lug around a huge camera and it's it's got really lovely features. So I'll kind of um, before before we do that, let's just toss in a roll of film. So I got some the film that I'm using exclusively right now, Portra 400, a very lovely film. Um, I personally buy on Amazon. It's around eight bucks a roll in the states right now. The reason why I love Portra 400 is that. The film saturation is really nice, it's really uh, fine grained. Also if you want to, you could push it to 1600 and it still looks uh, very, very nice. People ask me why don't I shoot slides, slides are too expensive and when I get my film processed, I just send it off over to Costco in the States, only five bucks a roll to get scanned and developed, or developed and scanned, which is great. First thing you gotta do, open it up, so there's a little tab here on the bottom, so you click that, whoops. It jumps out. So you just take the film, like so, insert it in here. Just feed it a little bit to the back, not too much, that's about good. And then you close the back. And then, here it starts loading up the film automatically. And the great thing is that if you just wait for it, it'll just show you the, oh bloody hell, Bellamy! You sent me a, you sent me a freaking broken Rico, you bastard. Oh, it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just do it later anyways. So it just it just loads up uh, the film and it shows uh, the the number of shots left in the the canister. So you can't see it looks like a little bit. The LCD is um, my god damage wall packing because it's sent from Tokyo, but it's going up 25, 26, um, 27, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 30, um, and then sometimes you could yeah. Oh, it looks like oh, it looks like it's working now. I guess it was just because it was loading up for the first time. But anyways, sometimes you could squeeze out. Um, you know, of course, there's 36 shots in a roll. Sometimes you could squeeze out 37 or 38. Looks like I got lucky and I was able to squeeze out 30, 37. So, of course, you just here's the the on off battery uh, button. Turn it on. Looks like I got 37. So I got a roll of 36 shots with one extra shot. Awesome. A little bit overview of this camera, so Bellamy did a buyer's guide over at his blog recently. Uh, differences between the different Ricos. so there's the Ricoh GR1, GR1S, GR1B, what's the difference? GR1 and the GR1S, pretty much the same camera except the GR1S has a special anti-reflective coating on the front as well as the LCD screen which actually um, lights up on top. I mean, pretty much the same camera. The, the Ricoh GR1B is considerably more expensive. The difference between that is that you could actually push the film. So if you're shooting 400 film, you could push it to 1600. Also, you could choose the different um, uh, snap focusing. So you could choose 1 meter, 1.5 meters, 2 meters, and so forth, which is great. So to actually, once again, talk about the advantages of this camera is the Ricoh GR1S, it's a cold camera. Uh, Daido Moriyama is very famous for shooting with this and it's a camera that is just really simple to use in terms of um, it's very user friendly everything's easily accessible via buttons that are all tactile and the great thing is the lens is it's a 28 millimeter lens 2.8 so relatively fast 28 millimeter so it's you know you got these functions up here really easy here's the shutter this uh, little thing here shows you amount of shots you got. And there's different modes, so you could shoot, you could change the preset focus to landscape, so putting it closer to infinity, push it one more time. Uh, you could actually preset a certain focusing range. Snap focus, it's essentially zone focusing, which pre focuses your lens to approximately uh, two meters when you're shooting street photography, which is a very nice function if you're trying to shoot people while they're moving. Um, also you have auto timer, you know, no one's ever going to use that. Also it's really nice because you could do exposure compensation on the top. So you crank it a little bit to the right, 
you go minus, crank it the other way here, you do plus. So this is really easy to change. Also it's got a lovely little built-in flash. Not the most powerful flash in the world, but it gets the job done. So you could just snap this on, you know, auto, on, or off. And this just makes it really easy to function. Also this little back door has a little window. It'll remind you that you actually have film in here and what speed you're using. It looks like this model, not all of them have it, but you could actually get the date and print it on it. I'll never use this in my life, but I mean, that's what the camera has. And you know, you could put on the neck strap, you could put on the wrist strap, pretty much um, that. And usually when I'm shooting street photography with this, I'm using my Leica when I'm shooting moving subjects and I have a lot of control over zone focusing, although you could do it with this as well. But the purpose of this camera is let's say I want to go somewhere where I want to be even more discreet, even you know, have a camera even less discreet than a Leica. So oftentimes when I'm shooting inside a mall or if I'm shooting inside a convenience store or shooting inside a department store, places where I'm not supposed to be shooting street photography, I mean this is quite possibly the less the least intimidating camera there is for street photography and of course I got my flash and if you look through uh, the viewfinder I wonder if it, can it can it look through the viewfinder see if you can stick that through can you see mm, yeah yeah stop stop okay yeah so you can see there's a frame lines there um, it'll show you the shutter speed of a scene in the far left and also there's a little line in the middle which is uh, that shows you the for macro. If you get closer than about 1.5 meters, you'll have to use that to frame your photographs. So essentially, it's a point shoot camera that you could actually use a viewfinder, and it is incredibly lovely. I've I've shot a few rolls with um, the other Ricoh that I had before it crapped out on me. But if you're into uh, street photography with film, or you know you don't want to drop too much money, or you want something nice and compact, uh, the Ricoh GR1S is a camera for you. Another camera I'm thinking about getting is the Contax T2, which is essentially another point shoot camera that's a film camera. It's got a 38 millimeter lens. Apparently the lenses are as sharp, if not sharper than the Leica's. And it might just be a nice backup to my M6 because the only cameras I currently own, um, I, if you guys don't know, I just sold my M9 because I'm making the full transition to film. I'll write a blog post about that later. So the only cameras I own as of this moment are my Leica M6, I have a little Olympus Pen Mini for my snapshots for my workshop which is digital, and now this camera. So maybe I'm talking about me buying another Leica MP or Contax T2 as a backup. But film cameras, remember, these are all full frame in this tiny little thing. I think you could get the Ricoh GR1S for around four to five hundred dollars right now. Um, if you're interested in picking up any compact film cameras or anything, contact my boy Bellamy Hunt, aka www.japancamerahunter.com. Sorry, my English just got screwed up there for a second. And, you know, tell him that I sent you. Any questions you should, we should ask, Michael, if you're curious about? No, I think you've covered it all. It looks fantastic. What a great little package for, um, and bang for your buck. Yeah, and bang for your buck. Yeah. All right, so... Any questions, leave it in the YouTube comments or contact Bellamy. I think that's it. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. Peace out.